End of the road. Palamedes hit the brakes and the cab skidded to a stop in front of the barn. A cloud of dust from the baked hard earth plumed upward, billowing out around the windows. Gilgamesh immediately pushed open the door and stepped out into the still morning, turning his face to the sun and stretching his arms wide. The twins followed him, pulling the cheap sunglasses the alchemist had brought them from their pockets. Flamel was the last to exit, and he turned to look at the knight, who had made no move to turn off the engine or get out of the cab. You are not staying? I am going to the nearest village, Palamedes said. I'll pick up some food and water and see if I can find what out what's going on. The Saracen Knight allowed his eyes to drift toward the king and lowered his voice. Be careful. You know how quickly he can turn. The alchemist moved the side mirror slightly, angling it to be able to see Gilgamesh and the twins exploring the barn. The building sat in the middle of the grassy field. Ancient and overgrown, the walls were constructed of thick black timbers and mud. The doors were of a more recent vintage, and he guessed that they had probably had put up sometime in the 19th century. Now they both hung askew, the right door attached by only a single leather hinge. The bottoms of both doors were rotted by to ragged splinters by weather and the gnawing of animals. The boy would be first inside, Palamedes said, looking over the alchemist's shoulder. Flamel nodded silently in agreement. You need to be careful of him also, Palamedes advised. You need to separate him from the sword. Nicholas adjusted the mirror slightly. He saw Josh tug Clarent from its map tube and slip into the barn, followed a moment later by his twin and then the king. He needed a weapon, the alchemist said. He needed to something to protect himself with. A shame it was that weapon. There are other swords. They are not quite so dangerous, not quite so hungry as that one. I'll take it back when he learns one of the elemental magics, Flamel said. Palamedes grunted. <laughs> You'll try. I doubt you will succeed. He put the car in gear. I'd best go. I'll be back as soon as I can. Are we safe here? Flamel asked the knight, looking around. The field was surrounded by ancient, twisted oaks. He could see no signs of nearby buildings or power lines. Any chance of the owner showing up? None at all, Palamedes said with a grin. Shakespeare owns it, and everything for miles around. He has properties all across England. The knight tapped the satellite navigator stuck to its cracked windshield. We have them all entered in here. That's how I was able to get you to safety. Nicholas shook his head. I never imagined Will as a property investor. But then I never imagined him as a car mechanic either. The knight nodded. He was, and still is, an actor. He plays many roles. I know he started buying properties back in the 16th century when he was writing. He always said he made more money from property than he did from his plays. But you don't want to believe half of what he says. He can be a terrible liar. Palamedes eased on the gas and turned the wheel, rolling the big black taxi around in a half circle. Flamel walking alongside the open window. The barn is invisible from the road and I'll lock the gate after me. The knight glanced sodlang at Flamel then jerked his chin in the direction of the dilapidated structure. Did you really try to kill the king the last time you met? Nicholas shook his head. In spite of what you think of me, Suck Knight, I am not a killer. In 1945, Perlin and I were working in Alamo Gordo in New Mexico. It was, without doubt, the perfect job for an alchemist. Even though our work was classified as above top secret, Gilgamesh somehow discovered what we were planning. And what were you planning? Palamedes asked, confused. To detonate the first atomic bomb. Gilgamesh wanted to be standing underneath it when it went off. He decided it was the only way he could truly die. The Saracen Knight's broad face creased with sympathy. What happened to him? He asked softly. 
Paganel had him locked up in an institution for his own protection. He spent ten years there before we thought it was safe enough to allow him to escape. Palamides grunted. <laughs> no wonder he hates you, he said. And before the alchemist could answer, the knight revved the engine and drove off in a plume of dust. No wonder indeed, Nicholas murmured. He waited until the dust had settled, and then he turned and headed for the barn. He was hoping Gilgamesh wouldn't remember everything, especially the part about being locked up, until after he had taught the twins the third of the elemental magics. A thud hit him as he slid through the doorway of the barn. Given the fractured state of his mind, would the king even remember the ancient magic of water?